What if I told you this has already happened? An internet protocol similar to the blockchain protocols have already been mass adopted over 30 years ago. Many people see blockchain and crypto as the new internet, Web 3.0. But it all started with Web 1.0, which was the internet itself. In this video, I will explore the idea that blockchain will be adopted in a similar way as the internet was. They say that history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. We do see that in nature, trends do occur, and even in the stock market, things often follow a similar pattern for a time. So if we looked back in time and looked at the adoption of the internet, we may be able to see a trend, a trend of how protocols are adopted. We can then benefit from knowing this trend by taking the right positions and making the right investments in crypto protocols today. So I'll go through a really quick summary of the content of this video. I'll first go through a brief history of how the internet was mass adopted, then a brief history of how crypto is being adopted today, a couple of comparisons and differences, a few coins which sound like they're following the same trend, and then what happens next. So before the internet was the internet, the internet was called ARPANET. ARPANET was designed and developed by the Department of Defense in the US, and it was used by military and research scientists to share information across the country. And ARPANET at the time was restricted for use by the general public. In fact, they didn't even know ARPANET existed. So ARPANET was great in that it allowed research scientists and military to share and hold all the information on a singular network. This was really great. And more and more networks around the country and even the world started popping up. You have different networks like NSFNet, SatNet, ClarkNet, ComSat, RCCNet. So all these networks were really useful for the researchers and military organizations at the time. But one big problem was that all the networks were not connected they all were regional networks. So for example, researchers in UCL in London could not share files with researchers in MIT in the US. So far, don't you think this sounds really similar to how blockchains are functioning today in that blockchains are mostly separate to each other and do not interoperate with each other. So for example, Bitcoin and Ethereum function pretty much separate to each other. They do not share and exchange information across their networks. And this is a problem because you're not able to share and send value across networks easily. For example, if you had a decentralized app running on one blockchain, and if you wanted to send value and information to use another function on another decentralized app, you wouldn't be able to do that easily. So similar to how information couldn't be shared across ARPANET and NSFNet and all the different networks before, we can make the assumption that interoperability will be a very key and important trend going forward in the blockchain space. So going back to ARPANET, the problem with interoperability was solved by developing a new protocol. This protocol was called TCP IP. TCP IP allowed all these different networks to interoperate with each other. So they could share and send information easily across all the different networks. And in fact, TCP IP is still being used today. However, TCP IP had some competition at the time. The OSI model was another internet protocol. The OSI model was really popular and many people thought it would be adopted over TCP IP. The OSI model was pretty much backed by almost every government and pretty much all the top research agencies. However, the problem with the OSI model was that its development was too slow. It was slow because of the bureaucracy and all the different organizations involved in developing this model. The model was dedicated to being an open source project for the next generation of the internet. But because of their dedication to openness, it suffered from slow development. 
all the organizations involved with developing the model couldn't agree on development issues easily, so this meant progress was really slow. Another issue was that the OSI model involved a lot of bureaucracy, and it was hard for developers to implement. And even though the OSI model was more robust, eventually TCPIP overtook the OSI model in adoption, as it was easier to implement for developers. So coming back to crypto world today, we can see the same trend in some of the biggest cryptos today. For example, Bitcoin. The early Bitcoin community was strong, but developers in the community took a long time to agree on development issues. And this is why you see so many forks of Bitcoin today, as developers broke off from the original Bitcoin to create their own coin. We can see this in Ethereum as well. We can see that some of the original Ethereum founders broke off from Ethereum and founded their own coins. Two of them, which are notable in the space, are Charles Hoskinson of Cardano, and then also Dr. Gavin Wood of Polkadot. So even though decentralization and openness is a big benefit of crypto, it can be also a disadvantage, as it means development takes longer as issues can't be agreed on between the different developing parties involved. So we can say the second key thing to look out for in blockchains is that the developers have an active community and make consistent progress towards developing the protocol. And the third key thing we can say is that the protocol should be cheap and easy for developers to implement. Now going back to TCPIP, this helped all the networks connect to each other and it formed what we call today the internet. However, the internet was still virtually unknown to the general public. Commercial and public use of the internet was a commonly debated topic. However, it was forbidden at the time as the internet was developed by research agencies and the military for government use. But the rules at the time for using the internet were subjective and unclear. And because of this, regional internet service providers began opening up businesses to provide the internet for use by the public. These first internet service providers would provide regional news networks and basic email for their users. The adoption rate of the internet grew with these internet service providers. And a couple years later, the US Congress released a bill which made it clear on the regulations for the internet. It made it clear to the internet service providers that the internet could be used by the general public. This allowed the providers full connection to the internet and the adoption rate of the internet grew exponentially after this. Now looking at regulations today, we do see some of the same trends, but kind of in reverse. Let me explain. We initially see that with the internet, the internet was developed by the government and it eventually was adopted by the general public. But with blockchain, it's in reverse. Blockchain was initially developed by the public and private companies, and is slowly being adopted by the mass public and governments. And the key thing in the middle here is the regulations. We can see that the internet was mass adopted after regulations were made clear. So if we make the same assumption with blockchain, we can say that blockchain will be mass adopted after regulations are made clear. And if we look at where we are today, we can say this has still not happened. Regulations are still unclear with blockchain. We can see in a few countries like Switzerland, Japan and the UK that crypto is here to stay. However, other countries like India, China and the US have mixed feelings about it. China is trying to ban mining and India has tried to ban crypto, however they keep changing their minds about it. So if you see regulations as a risk, you should position yourself in cryptos which work with the regulators. Now going back to the internet for the fifth and final point. The creation of the first web browser, the World Wide Web, was a very key event. This made it easy for normal people to access the internet and browse and search for files. You didn't have to know any computer language. You could just log on to the browser, which was a more user-friendly interface, and access the wealth of information on the internet. And because of this greater access, 
the adoption rate of the internet grew even faster and the rest is history as they say. If we compare this to the crypto space today, crypto is generally quite hard to get into for the average person and it's not very user friendly. There's a lot of jargon being used and it's just something that doesn't really appeal to the everyday person. Now there are some crypto projects which are more user friendly. Some of the projects like the crypto banks which offer high interest rates on your savings and as well as some of the challenger banks which do some of the same things. And then also the NFT space is quite attractive for everyday people where they can buy and trade digital art. However, there are not very many of these types of projects which cater to the everyday person. There just isn't enough real life applications for blockchain at the moment for the everyday person. Majority of the projects talk about the benefits of their technical features of their protocol. And this caters more towards developers. This makes sense because they want developers to develop on their blockchain. So over time, I'm sure we can see more real life applications for everyday users. However, just at the moment, there just isn't that many. So if we assume that usability and user friendliness is a key trend for adoption, then we can say that we should be looking out for protocols which have more applications with real world usage for the everyday person. So to summarize, the five key markers we've learned from looking at the adoption of TCP IP are the blockchain protocol should be interoperable. So it should be able to connect to other blockchain networks and existing networks. It should have an active development community, which consistently makes progress on development goals. It should be cheap and easy to implement by developers. It should have regulatory compliance and it should be useful and easy to understand for the mass public of users. Now, having done this research, a couple of coins came to mind. All of these coins have some of these five markers and then some of them have all of them. So I'll go through some of these coins, but I will not go into too much detail in this video. I will do a separate video on these coins if you would like me to. Just leave a comment below. So the first three coins are Cardano, Polkadot, and Cosmos. Now all three of these coins make interoperability a main feature of their blockchain. They also have strong and active development communities, and all of them are based in Switzerland, which is a crypto-friendly country, so it's good for regulations. However, all three of these coins do not have many apps which have real-life usage. There may be a few DeFi apps and gaming apps, but for the mass general public, there really isn't many apps with real-life usage yet. The next two coins are Icon and the Quant Network. Both of these coins make interoperability the key feature in their protocol. Icon is pretty much backed by the Korean government and it actually has real life usage in South Korea. One of the big projects on Icon is the My ID Alliance and this is a digital identity project where users can store their identity safely and verify themselves across various organizations within the Alliance, allowing smooth and safe transfer of personal information. One example of this project being used is the Jeju Island project. Visitors coming to and from Jeju Island in South Korea were tracked using the ICON blockchain. This made it easy to track the flow of visitors to the island. And this was really important at the time because of a certain event that happened in 2019, which I will not say on this channel, but I think you know what I'm talking about. And the second project, the Quant Network, is making it easier for enterprise to adopt blockchain. Their focus is interoperability through a blockchain operating system. The Quant Network operating system allows anyone to connect to any blockchain 
by using an API, which is installed with three lines of code. And the Quant Network operating system makes this easy by having nodes pre-installed onto the operating system. So this means developers do not need to learn how to operate their own node or also learn a new blockchain language. The operating system is also fully regulatory compliant as the CEO was one of the founders of the blockchain ISO standards and has more than 25 years of experience in cybersecurity. So you can be sure that he and his team will ensure that the operating system lives up to very high standards. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. I'll be making more content like this every week where I dive into more fundamental analysis and deep research. And I share this research with you in 10 minute videos so that we can make better long-term investments in crypto. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next week.